In this video I'll be saddle stitching the main seam, creating the holster pocket and forming the belt loop. Please remember to like, share and subscribe and if you've got any comments or questions drop them into the box below and I'll do my best to answer them. I hope you enjoy the video, thanks for watching. So I've let the holster sit overnight for 24 hours and as you can see the oil has spread nice and evenly and it will continue to do so so the colour will even out over the next few hours. I'm going to attach the welt, it's a quarter inch welt that goes in the seam so I'm going to glue that into position, fold the holster over, clamp it, leave it overnight so then it will be ready for stitching in the morning. In the meantime I'm going to make the hammer retainer, that, that's going to go in there. It's easier to do that while the holster is in uh, this stage of development. I've made the strap that goes round the holster that secures it to the back skirt. As I say, it's really it's just decorative because there's going to be two Chicago screws, one here and one here, uh, that's going to uh, lock it in position. But it's looking good and the next phase is to fit the welt. Now the welt's a uh, quarter of an inch thick and it's about half an inch, five eighths wide. So it's a good substantial welt that's going to be glued in. So what I do is make a reference mark on that side. Another one on here gives me a guide to uh, put the glue in. Contact cement both sides. Give that a few minutes just to flash off and it'll be ready to assemble. While I'm waiting for that I can show you the edge. I've uh, started the slicking process giving it a coat of edge finish in a dark brown there. Starting to get a nice shine on there. Slicking the edge down. Again it's easier to do this while the holster's in this state. When it's um, folded and you've got a lot of compound curves it's not quite so easy to get in there and do a nice job so I like to do a quite a bit of the burnishing while I can get good access to all the curves. Now I'm ready to put the well in position I leave it a little bit proud so that I've got enough there to sand off to get a nice a nice finished edge and it's just a case of gently bending it over Now at this point, put some water on the inside just to help that form a little bit easier. On the outside. Happy with that. get to this stage then what I can do is put one of my clamps on And 
you can see how thick that seam is now. It's just about three quarters of an inch. So that's clamped up nice and tight. I shall leave that overnight for the glue to fully set. Then I'll be ready in the morning to stitch the seam and start forming the holster. Now it's set up overnight. That's really firmly glued in position now. As you can see, that's ready to be stitched. Now I could use my harness stitching machine or I could use my Tipman Boss hand crank stitching machine, but what I'm gonna do, because this seam is gonna take so much stress when I form the holster, I'm gonna use a saddle stitch. Now a saddle stitch is by far the strongest way to stitch leather together. So what I'm gonna do is punch out the stitching holes on my Tipman Boss. And then I'm going to use a waxed braided nylon thread, which is super strong. And I'm going to saddle stitch this seam. And that way it's going to be a bomb proof, bulletproof seam. Really super strong. Never any issues with that moving or coming apart. But first I'm going to put my maker's mark on the back of the holster. So I'm just going to dampen that piece of leather. So now I'm saddle stitching the, the seam. It's gonna take me about 10 minutes to do the whole thing. It's a traditional method of construction. Very, very strong and durable. I like to do it on a lot of my holster seams and bullet loops because it's uh, a very secure method of construction. So there we are, I finished saddle stitching the seam, good and strong. I've just got to trim off this excess material, sand the edge down so it's nice and uniform, start the slicking process, apply an edge coat to it, and then I'll be ready to start forming the holster. So I'll show you that in a minute. You can see just how thick that seam is. Just going to run my edging tool along there. Ready to start the slicking process. So I've just made the hammer retainer. It's cut from the same three mil veg tan leather that I'm using to make the holster and the belt. I've given it a coat of neats for oil and now I'm just gonna pull it through these two holes to secure it in place. As I use this little tool here, just feed it through the slot. I made a little hole on the end or a little slit rather on the end of the retainer strap. means I can just work it through. Like that. So now I'm getting ready to form the pocket of the holster. I've cased the leather, basically let it sit in some warm water for about 30 seconds. So it's nice and wet and pliable and uh, will allow the leather to stretch as I form it. Now, um, the first thing I'm gonna do is 
start working it, working the opening with this piece of dowel. It's quite a tough operation to force the, the steel apart. And when I get it like that, I can insert this piece of dowel. Now this is a two inch wide or two inch diameter piece of uh, doweling. And this will form the, uh, the right, the correct size for the cylinder area of the uh, 45 long colt. Just whack it in with a hammer. Now I'm gonna use a piece of leather around there. And so I can gently, with a rawhide mallet, give it a bit of persuasion to form that curve, to open it out. As you can see there, Obviously, because it's got a steel lining, it stays in position. I can open it up from the, from the bottom as well. Now you can see it's starting to get a nice holster shape. I'm going to check the fit with a firearm. Even there, with not much work, you can see how nicely that fits in there. But I'll continue working this till I'm happy with the design, with the, uh, the contour and the curves. And then I shall let it fully dry out overnight and give it some more neats for oil to the inside and apply the final finish coat. Now one of the key benefits of this style of holster is that when your gun's inside it and you cock the hammer, the cylinder is free to rotate. Now this was a big advantage to the fast draw shooter. That's working fine. Open up this slot for the for the strap to go through. I'm going to form the uh, bend that's going to make the um, loop for the for the belt to go through. At this point, the leather is just like almost like clay, so you can mold it to get the uh, finish you want. Smooth out any wrinkles or any imperfections. Now to start the bend to make the uh, fold for the belt, start on the edge of the table, 
to gently form that leather. Start that curve. Slowly bend it round and these Chicago screws are going to line up with these holes to form the uh, connection between the holster and the back skirt. You can see it's taking shape now. I've got one screw in. I'm going to, uh, that allows me to mark an impression where the second screw is going to go so I can punch a hole from there. Can start forming the the tabs at the back. You can see there. That's where the belt's going to go through. And use this piece of dowel so that it doesn't squash up too much. So now I've got the holster fully formed. The firearm is a nice comfortable fit in there. I shall let this dry out overnight and uh, give it some more neats for oil on the inside. A tan coat finish on the smooth leather. Get the buckle strap adjusted. Then the holster will be ready for installation onto the belt. It's not actually connected to the belt, but it's quite a firm fit and um, it fits into the slot that's cut into the top of the belt so it's flush with the top of the belt and um, yeah that's turned out really well see I've got my two sh screws there on the back that are locating the uh, pouch to the back skirt yeah yeah I'm really pleased with that when that dries out it, it will lighten up quite considerably and uh, I'll show you that tomorrow. Now it's been 24 hours and you can see how nicely that's dried out. The colors lightened up considerably. And so what I'm gonna do now is apply some more neats for oil to the smooth portion of the holster. This is the um, holster strap and I dipped it in oil so it's got a thicker coating. So, uh, so it's a little bit darker. So when I put the oil on here, it's going to darken it down quite a bit. Again, that's going to soak in. Then I'll be able to put my top coat on there. Now I've warmed this, this oil up. So it's going to take it nice and, nice and uh, evenly. And the beauty with this oil is it spreads throughout the pores and the fibers of the leather over a period of time and you get a nice mellow color i won't put any more on the uh, face on the rough out portion that's already had some oil on it Make sure to get some on the inside as well. So there we are. It's almost finished. You can see that's already that's soaking in. And that will lighten up. Needs a little bit more up on there. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. In the next one, I'm going to be making the gun belt, installing the hammered brass buckle, and completing the rig. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell. That way, you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. And I'll see you in part three.